YouTube. Oh, we are now streaming live on YouTube. And now you want to close that browser up on the top. Hit the X and just nail that. This sucker. whole thing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And okay. that one. Good. And a couple of comments showing over here, but it won't show on MCAT. That's going to be a problem. So um, can you share your screen? Mm -hmm. You can share it right now just so you can see. How do I? What is Okay, that's very weird. Okay, so are we good to go, Kirsten? Nope, not yet. Nope. Okay. Got a couple more things we need to do here. So, what so I do? You this? Show your slide. Yeah, right there. The left one or the right one? Let's try the left one. Or see what happens there. Uh, yeah, that's not going to show on MCAT. Okay. So, use the right one. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you can stop the sharing over here on the left. On the right hand side, there's a stop share. On the right. Yes, I think it's in the red. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. So probably only use the one on the left. I think that's the one we just did. Yes. Or the right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. So there, there, everybody's seeing it. And you and guys can see that. The other thing I need you to do is hit this button here to give your signal to rock. Which one? There's a little thing here. This, this new tech VGA, this little guy right here. Ron, did that work? Yeah. Not get you an image yet. Okay, Marty said she just has one more thing she needs to do real quick and then we'll be ready to go. I'm sorry, maybe I missed this. Danny, are you able to get your video on there? Oh, awesome. Yeah, I just have to, I have to like set up outside because it's dark. Oh, okay. My Sounds house. Good. All right, uh, Marty said we are good to go. Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna read off the phone numbers that if anybody wanted to call in and participate, um, it is area code 253-215-8782. And for landlines, it's 188-475-4499. And we are officially calling the meeting to order. Um, and we do not have any guests with us today. Um, there's not much housekeeping going on right now. Um, things are moving pretty quickly and we'll just kind of discuss everything as we get into our agenda. So let's just jump right in and move on to number four of approval of June minutes. So if anybody wanted to um, unmute to make a motion, now is an appropriate time. I will make a motion to approve the minutes. <clears throat> okay. All those approve for minutes, anyone opposed? Uh, minutes are approved. Um, so our new members, we currently have an application up on the city website. So if anyone is interested in joining the public art committee, or if you know anyone who would be interested in joining the public art committee, applications are online right now. Um, you can find them at the city's website for us. So if you typed in um, Missoula Public Art Committee, the city's link to that would come up and you can find the application on that page. Um, and so then they would apply and it would be mayoral appointed. So he would have to approve that application. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, but send your friends there, let people know. Kirsten, maybe we could share that on Facebook just to see if anyone's interested or if anybody has an idea of someone who they would like to apply. You can shout out some names. <laughs> Kathy. Sorry, I'm just waiting to be called on. Um, is that something? Oh, Sorry, one thing, for whatever reason on my Zoom, if you guys could do the hand raise thing on the chat because it doesn't show me everybody's picture for whatever reason, I can't get it to do oh. that. So please just do the hand raise. And I am sorry, Kathy, I didn't see you. It's because no for whatever reason, I can't see people. No worries, I was just thinking that um, we could send out the notification to our email list that we already have with the city. 
which is so yeah. artists, but there might be some that might be interested. It might be an overblast, but it might be a good thing to let them know that they have an opportunity to participate. I and think that's a great idea. Um, that's a really wonderful idea. Does anyone else have any ideas or somebody that they would like to put forward or suggest? I just have a question. I have two questions. One, I can't figure out a hand raise. Excuse me, I don't see a hamburger in my window. And Sorry. I'm not seeing the option. Yeah, you're totally okay. fine. If you can't find the hand raise thing and it's kind of a moment where you can just jump in, please do because um, Zoom is interesting. Okay. And, and second, the question, uh, question I have is, is who, whose position are we replacing? Uh, Peter Lambros. Oh, okay. okay. So he stepped down, I think, in May. Mm -hmm. And so we were trying May, to... Yeah, end of May. For that. End of May. So we've been trying to find someone to replace him. Um, there's been some interest, but nobody's taken the full leap and applied. So if you guys know anybody, I think we should definitely do the email blast. Kirsten, if we could send that out, just to let some artists know that we are looking for someone to come join us, that would be great. Yeah, I will send it to Heidi to send out to the city list. I think that'd be a good move just so we can see what who's interested. Have we advertised in the Cultural yeah. Commission oh. newsletter? Oh, sorry, Danny. It's okay. Have, have we, um, I mean, sorry, the Arts Missoula newsletter. My apologies. Have we, we have not. We have not, because I was waiting for this meeting to see how people felt about doing stuff like that. Oh. Um, I didn't want to just take, say, okay, we're going to advertise this unless some, because if somebody had someone that they really wanted to apply for it, I would prefer to hold off on the advertising mm -hmm. since it is a mayoral appointment um, and give them an opportunity mm -hmm. to apply. Danielle? It was, it was me. I was being oh, sorry, the sorry. noisy one. And I was, I was um, just asking if you could repeat again where to locate or maybe you can send the link or something of how to locate the actual application i i googled it and it didn't come to the top for me okay so let me i uh, so if you go to the city of missoula website so the website is ci.missoula.mt.us slash 438 slash public dash art dash committee. That's like the long version of it, but you have to scroll all the way down to the very bottom of the page and it says appointments. Position vacancies are advertised in the media approximately one month in advance. And then it says vacant positions. So you click on the vacant positions and it'll say there's the design review board has a vacant position and we also have one. So then you click on that link and it takes you um, to a description of us and then at the very bottom it says how to apply and you can apply online and it's just an online application that they do so it takes about three clicks to get to the actual application for our committee and if anybody had any questions and they wanted uh, the website was a little too difficult or they were having issues they can always be referred to Heidi to or they can email myself or Kirsten and we can send Heidi um, an email asking to email them an application for review. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. All right, so moving on to the mountain line. Um, I met with Shanti in like two weeks ago and she showed me the areas that she wanted to do a mural and they're thinking of doing it in the very front of the transfer station where there's pillars. Um, and they are getting an art call ready and getting it ready to be sent out. So once that gets completed and things get moving in there, um, we'll be moving pretty quick, I think. They would like to have it finished by October if possible. And I I think their budget was around $5,000 for um, this commission. And that's really all the news that I have right now. There's not much, we're not really um, doing much with it other than just assisting and giving them guidance and moving the process forward and helping them do an art uh, selection when it's time. 
I had a question. Yeah, Dennis. Would, would that be a mural or a sculpture? They're thinking of it being a mural because they would like to have those, those big pillars that hold up the awning to the front of the transfer station. Um, they want to have those painted first and then eventually moving to like the side of the building that's facing the, I don't know what street that is, but they're spruce and some, sorry guys, I'm terrible with street names. Ryman, Ryman. Ryman. Um, so they're going to do it in stages and do different things. Um, but yes, it would be a mural right now. Eventually, I think they'd like to move into different things, but they're just dipping their toes into how they feel about it. They're all really excited, and I think it's going to be a wonderful project. Uh, what kind of surface will that be painted on? So that surface is actually, it's going to be concrete. So this, the pillars, as opposed to the wall on Ryman, are smoother in texture than the wall. The wall is really rigid and porous. Um, so that would take the artist a lot more time. The pillars are just kind of a smoothed concrete, um, but it's a lot of space. And initially they wanted to do it for 3000. I was trying to get it to seven at a minimum just because it is a larger space and it's gonna require a lot more work from the artist. Oh. I know that in the art call, they're going to ask for it to show sustainability because um, they are moving to having green buses and using public transportation as a way to get around instead of driving your car. But I think they're really open to also seeing what artists are going to interpret that with and how it's going to look in that space. Hmm. Nice. I think it's a super cool project. I think um, Shanty's just super jazzed on it. The board's really excited for it as well. And it's going to make that whole space, I think, brighten up. And that's kind of I wish it. there was a way to for them to allocate more monies. I just dealing with that concrete and that surface, it's going to take an incredible amount of time. I just look back at some of my own oh, yeah. of those columns, and they're huge. And I they are I think huge. That's that's just way too little for artists to be spending that amount of time. But it, yeah, and that's so, I mean I got them up I from the three I, I just wish. So. Yeah, I just wish I think was that was a win on. But I agree mm -hmm. with you. I, think I was trying to get them up higher. Um, I mean, when we look at what it took Lillian to do the soil wall, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, oh, I know. I, I just wish there was a way that we could find more monies. Yeah, I agree. Um, and the other part of that I should mention is. So say we put out this art call and the artists look at it and they're like, for that amount of money, I just can't do that space. Mm -hmm. And we don't get any art that is appropriate for the space or up to caliber for the space. They are willing for us to do, to use that money to then do the front wall of Ryman and then make it more worthwhile for the artist. And we can put out the art call again for a different location. So they are very, they're willing to be flexible. And if they're not getting what they are interested in or what we think is going to be appropriate art or art that is meeting the standards of the public art committee, they're willing to be flexible. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what we get and we'll just kind of play it by ear, I think. All right, so we'll move on now to the traffic signal boxes, Kathy. Ah, well, <laughs> as you all know, COVID has been interesting um, trying to get the selection committee together. We, uh, we've tried every public possible place and ultimately um, settled on next Wednesday under the tent at Karis Park. So be socially distant. Um, we thought it was imperative that everybody see the actual models. We had 15 submissions. Um, and it, which is exciting to see. So yeah, yeah um, for the four locations. And so we will from three to five next Wednesday, um, 
have the selection committee hopefully have the finalists selected and then be able to then do like a zoom quick zoom interview with each one to make sure that everything is still copacetic with their schedule we're still trying to stay on the same schedule um but you know it, it's not covid and the actual artists none of the artists feel threatened about being in a location where they're by themselves it's just getting the selection committee together to actually see the boxes, the models in person. Um, so Dennis and I have been working on that and, and um, artists have either been notified or voicemailed or I spoke with them personally about the delay and why. And people understand the whole COVID thing. So, um, so the selection committee then of course, as typical public art committee, neighborhoods, funders, Department of Transportation. Um, Jane Kelly has now retired. So we'll have a new representative from the neighborhood's office. So we'll probably have again between 10 and 15 on the selection committee. Um, and I think um, Kirsten, we, well, we do have the submittable site that people can go on to. We just of course ask that no comments be made prior to the selection committee, um, but everybody knows those rules. Um, I think we've got some good submissions. Awesome. Uh, one question regarding it being at Karis, do you need um, public art committee members to kind of filter through to watch the boxes to make sure that they stay where they're at? Um, do you need Well, I think we'll just that? like usual, just have them up during, I mean, normally we just have the boxes at the, um, at the selection committee and then we'll have them set up so people can look at them, be socially distant. I mean, one of the issues was we love to look at individuals works um, but I'll have my laptop there if people want to flip through that plus um, I've already started printing everything from submittable full art, full color copies of all of their past work so people can see that and so I don't I mean I don't think we'll we need to watch them at any time I think if we all show up between three Five, run through it like we always have. Um, mm -hmm. It'll be done in two hours and I think we'll be able to make our selections and move forward with it. Awesome. And socially distant. I checked, we can move tables around, um, checked with MDA, checked with all the powers that be and so far we're okay with doing it there unless something drastic happens between now and next Wednesday. Awesome. And then as many people from the art committee as possible would be great to have mm -hmm. there to be part of this selection committee. Yes. And Kirsten will help us. We'll be sending out notifications or, and so you'll be reminded, but um, it's been a challenge as you can all imagine. <laughs> Did you say, say you what, please? Did you say three to five? Three to five for the 15 submittals. And so, and um, there's one person, we probably, it'll actually be one less than that because we have one that just was not complete at all in any way, shape or form. Um, so, but lovely boxes as always. And that's August 5th from three to five. Correct. Okay. Awesome. Um, does anyone um, have and any? Then, then just one more thing on, on the signal boxes. I know I keep mentioning this, but um, I, I don't want it to fall by the wayside, but there we're still um, still working with Jeff Stevens on that. I, I keep calling the tribute box, um, which is over at Playfair Park. We received the grant for that, and that will just be vinyl reproduction of images of those boxes that have gone by the wayside, so to speak. So it'll have an image of the box, the artist's name when it was done, just so people can realize that there have been some additional boxes, but they've either been replaced, uh, well, they essentially have been replaced. So just to give those artists some ongoing tributes. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for the update. Um, does anyone have anything that they'd like to ask or add before we move on? All right, we will move on to Stony, the welcome to Missoula sign. Um, hi guys. Uh, I guess I was just thinking 
uh, PAC Live uh, is on pause. So I'm a lump on the committee right now. And I thought I would pick up a different football and play for a little bit. Um, we've talked about the welcome to Missoula sign. And it seemed like maybe this is a good time to start pushing some emails around and um, see if this is a thing we can do and want to do. And I'm happy to, um, happy to, I thought maybe we could kind of close my internet browser, keep logging it down here. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess, uh, you know, I don't know if we officially want to vote in, like, this is something we want to take on right now. It's something we certainly talked about a bunch. Um, I'd like to open it up to you know, reflections um, and also kind of what would be first steps, like who, I mean, who are the key stakeholders in us and who do we need on board to make it happen? So, Stoney, I just want to let you know, we're having a little hard time hearing you. I think um, Lisa made a comment that it's a little hard to hear you and it's a little hard for me as well. I don't know if it's your connection um, or what. I think I got the gist of what you were saying and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't but, get the gist. Excuse me, Lisa. No, I can't hear Lisa. <laughs> I couldn't. Oh, you're muted, Lisa. Sorry, Stoney. I can't hear you. So I. Oh, Stoney, I would just volunteer to help you. It's been a project I've thought long and hard. So if you want to chair, I will be a flunky. Um, you know, we had talked with Dave Strohmeyer, County Commissioner. They were excited about it. Um, I mean, that at that the one meeting that we had, a, I don't know, a few months ago. Um, but I'll be a flunky. All right. Yeah, so I think Stoney was just wanting to know her first steps in getting this process going. Um, so first process is you're getting your subcommittee together with you and Kathy and anyone else who is interested in joining. Um, and then I think you guys can go from there, right? And kind of seeing where this all develops and mm -hmm. takes you. I think there might um, be some tourism, oh, sorry. I think there might be some tourism dollars and some other monies we can use to really get some, maybe three substantial pieces. Is so there just a specific out. location that we are looking at for the sign? Um, I mean, I think that's a good question. You know, in the past when it's been brought up, um, just in conversations at the main entryware corridors, west of town, east of town, and south of town. So as you come into Missoula from the east, from the west, and then up from up the Bitterroot. But that's all up for discussion as well. Okay. I think this is a super cool project for you guys to take on. Um, I'm happy to help in any way I can as well. So just let me know, Stoney. Um, this is a super cool project. Mm -hmm. um, so can I just circle back around because, uh, and so did you say Dave Strohmeyer, Kathy? Can you all hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we, um, Stoney, or Stoney, I'm sorry, Courtney, went, we sat down with Dave, when was that? Three months ago, four months ago? Oh man, that with Heather? Yeah, and one of the yeah, ideas we floated. No. Yeah, April, no. April, we were shut down, yeah. right? April, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we met with him in February. Right. But yeah. So it was, it was a while ago that we met with him, but their um, attitude towards it was very positive, and they were eager in doing more with the public art committee. That was my interpretation of that meeting, that they were excited to mm -hmm. engage with us. Yeah. 
and an interesting to do a collaborative city county project or something to that effect. So yes. he's with Emma County. Sorry for the, the dense question. He's, with he's a county commissioner, I believe. Okay. Perfectly. And then how about Department of Transportation? Is there contact? Like, do we, where's the red tape going to come from? Well, I think the red tape would may or may not be dependent upon where everyone thinks is the appropriate location, whether it be on private land, highway land, whatever, and how it how it might be envisioned in that way. MDT has been so great to work with that I think you know, I, I don't know. I mean, there's, you know, welcome to Lolo, welcome to Florence. They're all on, from what it appears to be in public right away, just far enough off the road. Okay. In 93 okay. highway, so. Okay, so Kathy, Felix. you and I maybe can touch base. Yeah. And then is there is there anybody else who wants to add them to the email? Uh, or, uh, you know, whatever, do you want to be looped into the subcommittee? It would be fun. Okay, we'll take it away. Let oh, Stoney? You, you... Oh. Yeah. I'd yeah. be interested. Cool. Great. We'd love to have you. And I said I'd be happy to help you, Stoney, so you can put my name okay. down. I don't know make sure you're um, what you guys need, but I'm happy to help. Thank you. That would be great. great. Let's do it. Great. Great. All right. So moving on to um, Lisa and Danielle with the Indigenous Mural Project. I also have a joiner with me, and she may or may not be talking. So keep, ignore it. So Lisa, I'll um, defer to you for this project. OK. okay. I haven't been able to meet with um, Danny yet, so um, she, I haven't looped her in on all this stuff. Um, but things are things are moving along. They want to to move forward on the project. We've had a couple meetings, um, and we're looking at a pretty big space down at the substation. They are thinking. Um, of building walls around it. The footprint okay. is going to stay the same, but the um, they're going to probably build cement walls around it completely, um, which makes our process of for actually doing the murals a lot easier because the artist can paint on stuff that can just be rolled up and sent and adhered to the wall. Um, so it, it um, for this project that requires maximum flexibility, that will be a really good quality of it. Um, so the the southern edge that is, this is around the substation. Um, the southern edge that is in the parking lot, there will probably be some sort of banded or stamped concrete that goes up to about five feet. And then the murals, 14 murals that go along that. Um, probably for another 10 to 15 feet above that and perhaps some sort of um, band, design band that makes it all cohere, maybe on the bottom and the top, maybe it just at the bottom. Um, we're still working out those details. It's a two year project, so it's, um, you know, we have time. Um, we're pushing for a little interpretive center to the left where those two big pine trees are, if you guys know where, um, so it's on the west side. Um, those trees will probably have to come down, but we're thinking of ways of incorporating the wood into the pavilion. So um, the project there is for, the proposal is for a lot, like a little um, healing garden that um, emphasizes Native American plants. Um, and then on the east side, which runs along Patti Creek, um, there's about 130 feet of wall space 
we're trying to get all the gates on one side because that's one of the things is there's all these gates at the bottom that would break up murals. So get, we're trying to get all the gates on the east side and we would just um, dedicate that whole side to the Salish. So uh, a poem by Vic Charlo um, written in both Salish and English. Um, uh, uh, and the one that I picked was this one on Buffalo and then um, some Buffalo art that kind of looks like a stampede um, by Frank Finley, who's a Salish artist. Um, going across there and then possibly two other panels that could just be interpretive information about the Salish in um, this valley. So um, that's where we are now in the proposals. We're moving deeper every meeting and there's about a meeting a month. Um, so I sent earlier today those questions by Donna Gawker, Gockler. I don't know if you guys had a chance to um, look at them. And, you know, maybe it's too much to take up today. Maybe we ought to um, think about them for next time and not and have maybe a more constructed conversation. But um, I'll just read over what she wants. She needs to know what the approval process might be how a call for artists would be conducted, how the art would be selected as well as paid for then maintained. And, you know, Northwestern Energy is, is the main um, funder for this, but they, they do need information about being maintained, um, which I know Courtney, you had some information about that. Yeah, so for our ordinance, and this is something that's actually come up with Lillian Nelson's piece that I'm discussing with Kathy. Um, so literally it was just on that and I apologize because I've been reading over the, making sure I'm up to date on my ordinances as well as um, I was looking at the downtown master plan because she does mention the master plan as well needing to be adhered to in that and I apologize, let me just pull it back up so I have the correct wording. Um, so for maintenance, so the resident agency will be responsible for the ongoing care and maintenance of all artworks purchased and commissioned by, for the project in accordance with the guidelines established in the uh, Missoula Public Art Committee's collection. So that I think could mean a couple of different things. Kathy just sent an email regarding Lillian's piece where we would pressure wash it. And Kathy, please feel free to step in at any time. Um, but there is, I, my recollection is that we do have someone we work with within the city who helps us maintain the maintenance for these pieces. Correct, Kathy? Yeah, and well, and I wasn't saying we would. I was just, when we were talking about Lillian, piece I, um, in the past and he's so busy because when Stoney brought it up last time and we were trying to get something done to clean it out I think it was at our last meeting I shot Steve Felix an email just to see if they had anything that could equipment that could gently wash it because I mean there I mean we have a three-part partnership in essence between the neighborhoods public art committee and Montana Department of Transportation and you know, in the past when we've done public private partnerships um, with the private sector and the public art committee, private sector has insured and taken the primary maintenance responsibility because it's been on their buildings, yet we have secondary responsibility um, as the public art committee. So not that that has to be the way it is, but hopefully the, um, because they have the equipment and, and then the city I believe has a gentle pressure washer because we, I mean, we just have to be careful with what we're shooting the surface, how much pressure we're shooting it with. So. so I think in answering Donna's question, as far as maintenance, we oversee the maintenance, whether we directly um, clean it or not, we're the ones who kind of watch the pieces and make sure that it is maintained. Unless, um, like the Paparello's piece, we are not giving any monies to that. We are simply just kind of helping them along in the process. 
and they want full ownership of that piece. And per Jim Nugent, since we are not really doing anything for it, they've already found the artist, they already know what piece they wanna do, we're just there giving them counsel. They are in charge of maintaining that piece, they own that piece, it's theirs. Um, so it's a little different when we do public art committee pieces that we are in charge of and we're the ones um, selecting the pieces, going through the artwork and all of that. So I think that would fall under what we've been doing with a lot of our art pieces. Um, mm -hmm. So we would be the ones kind of looking out for it and maintaining. And you know, and, and our contracts always give the artists the first um, opportunity to do any, if something negatively happens, we, the artist by contract gets to have the first opportunity to correct that piece. So, you know, by having the public art committee coordinate that, we can ensure that the artist has that opportunity to do so. Okay. And in our finances, the percent for art, so that 1% mm -hmm. goes to art and the 0.5% goes to um, maintenance as well and administrative stuff. So mm -hmm. we have some monies set aside specifically for the maintenance of pieces. So we, if we had to um, dip into that, we would use it, it goes specifically for those things. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. Um, Lisa, that is, it's such an exciting project. It mm -hmm. is. I mean, it'll be, a, a, it, it will really stamp mm -hmm. Missoula in a big way. And then I know that Donna had questions in regarding selection of the piece. We have flexibility to specifically ask artists to submit for it. And since we want to make sure that they, these pieces are from um, members of tribes specifically, what we would probably end up doing is getting a list of artists that Danny has compiled who are interested and then doing an art call with the artists from that tribe and uh, doing a, a subcommittee or selection committee, I apologize, um, that way. And looking at what they produce for that art call. So it'd be a limited art call, not an open art call. Like we do with the traffic signal boxes, that's an open art call. Um, this would be a, a limited one where we ask a few specific artists to participate but we would still do our selection committee for all of that. And then they would do interview rounds like we do with the traffic signal boxes and our other art calls that we've done. Um, okay. And then in keeping it consistent with the downtown master plan and the downtown um, Riverside Parks and Trails plan, I've been looking over the master plan and as far as the art selection is concerned, the location that you is selected is right on track with the downtown master plan as far as it being an art location that they would like to see art in. Yeah. Um, and then the indigenous art is also right on track with the master plan. Uh, we would probably have to defer to parks as far as making sure that what you've set up with the garden is in line with what their plan is. Um, I'm not seeing anything specifically that states. If I may interject here, there are a couple people from those committees on this committee that are there. That is. Yeah, I, and I figured that's why I was like, it, like everything that you've said is just like right on point. So I don't know why following the master plan would be an issue, and we'll just defer to them as far as the Riverside goes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for looking that over, though. Okay, so nobody sees, I mean, there's nothing in our process that would slow this down. Um, I mean, Linda, I McCarthy, think we would Linda McCarthy a couple of times sort of put us on and say that how is the public art committee um, going to pay for this? Like she kind of put me on the spot and I was just like, it isn't. <laughs> like if this can't be funded outside of the art committee, then it won't happen and it really ought to happen. Um, so okay. I think what we would do is we just ask Northwestern to put in writing that they're committed to X amount of dollars or X amount of murals and we go from there with well, Annette. We have really strong allies in this Blue Ribbon Committee and they, mm -hmm. have, um, they have some other funding sources. And so they Great. talked to me afterwards saying, don't worry about it. If, 
The yes. other thing I would let Linda know is that we don't actually fund out of our monies any projects. We fundraise for those projects through grants and donations. Okay. So when they ask how we're paying for it, you can just let them know we don't, unless it's a percent for art project, we don't get any money allocated to us to do projects. We have to go out and find the money to do a project, which is what we're doing with this one. We are finding the money to do the project. Yeah, I think that um, they were curious um, about that percent for art. Like why would this project be um, available for that money? Well, it's not available for percent for art unless they're doing any city building Okay. So we don't have any money to put towards that. Um, because it's right now. We haven't had any percent for art money actually come in. I've been trying to figure that out with Lee, but there has been a backlog in city finances due to COVID, unfortunately. Um, which is, it is what it is at this point. I mean. But the overall answer is because it's not private. It's not public land, it's private. That's why there isn't a percent for art. Well, no, there's just no building that's been built recently oh. where we're going to get money from it. I mean, if there was money there, why is this proper? Why is this project not eligible for percent? Oh, it could be if we had money for it. it we do not. If we get a percent, so say like the park over at Lowell School, they're going to redo that park. So we're going to get a percent for art from that park because it is a city project. I don't know how much that park is going to be, so I don't know what percent we're going to get. So say we as the public art committee look at that park and we're like, hey, we don't really want to put art here. We would like to use that money to put towards this project. We can do that. Does that make sense? Yes. So we would have, if we had a percent for art, we would be able to do that. If you're interested, I can get on Lee harder and find out if we have any percent for art monies that we could use. No. Nope. I think it's better to not have any right now and tell okay. them that. And if we get some, maybe they'll never find out and fund it them their own way. Yeah, well, the other and thing so though, is we, we do have that money that is about two years old that we're supposed to be receiving um, from the police. From oh, the Catlin building? The Catlin building, but that's not that much. And No, I think that one was gonna be a maximum of like two thousand yeah. dollars and then the park at Lowell is being built and we should be getting money from that but they haven't even started that project so i don't and i don't know when they're going to start that project for us to get something mm -hmm. from that um those are the only two main percent mark things that it were on potential money for and then we use the mrl money for a piece in the mrl park so Lise, maybe you could just say that that money initially is earmarked for work that's associated with the public construction. Um, and at this point, we just don't have anything left from past projects and nothing has come in from proposed or future projects. Is that an easy way to explain it? Um, sure, yeah. yeah so, I'm happy to field more questions about that too if they come up and you just want to defer them to me. You're welcome to do that. I mean, I think we have time. So, okay. you know, I'll give them this answer, which is true now. And then if our, if it, I mean, we don't even know how much is this, this is going to cost at this point. So when the numbers yeah. start getting real, I'll check back in again about what money we have. And okay. I'll double check with Lee too, just to make sure that all the ducks are in a row um, when it comes to that. So that way we have clear documentation for you. Okay, that sounds good. Did we hit all of the questions that needed to be answered right yeah. now? Yep. And then we're uh, having, uh, there will be another meeting in a week or two and um, Meanwhile, Danny and I are trying to meet with Karen Sippy about, she's on that blue ribbon committee and she wants to know about the, um, like the outreach to Native American artists part of it. So we have to start working on that. Um, I mean, when I'm talking to these committees, they, 
they seem to think we just have a list of a hundred artists that could do this, um, like there, and and that they yeah, can does. Have to be in like two seconds. So there's a little disabusing of their notions of how art is actually made. <laughs> that has to happen, but we're working on it. Awesome. Kathy, why is your screen so fuzzy? Did you put that? No, I thought it was because my little camera was goobery. I have no idea. Did you put Vaseline on your camera lens? I've heard about that trick. Yeah, I said I had a little aura, maybe. <gasps> oh. so, or a ghost or something following me around. Or maybe. Right. Okay, here. I'm done. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions about this project or want to add anything to it for Lisa and Danielle or anything they want to add at all? Kudos. Awesome. Thanks, Lisa. This is a super amazing project and I'm so impressed at how quickly things are moving just from like conception idea to where we're at right now. It's just amazing how this is all coming together and it's really just beyond I think anybody's imagination of what it's going to look like when it's finished like I can't even it's just going to be beautiful and amazing I think um, this is a, um, like I feel pretty lucky that we had that we were already thinking about this idea that Willow brought it up because um, they would have kind of gone with anything but because we had this one already formulating um, they were like, okay, yeah, let's do that. Um, I it, love it. It's, I mean, it's kind of a, a, a good reason to, to do those kind of projects that we do in January where we just generate ideas because I mean, in this case, it, we happen to have a good idea in our pocket. Oh At yeah. Time that someone with a, I mean, they showed us pictures of the one that they're doing in Billin, Billings, mm -hmm. um, covering their substation, electric substation. And there, I mean, it's clearly that's a multi-million dollar project. Um, and yeah. that's what they're going to spend here too. Um, wow. So it's right place at the right time yeah. with having done the homework for ideas, so. And, yeah, and I recall we were already reaching out to them, I think in December or January, Northwestern Energy, um, just to like, do all that stuff. So it's just like wonderful. Everything is just like so awesome. Thank you, Lisa. It, this is just such a great project. Um, so moving on to the Planned Parenthood mural with Daniel. Danny, whenever you are ready. Um, yeah. Um, so that got um, postponed. Um, I wanted to be intentional about that project. And I think for me, that means um, just holding off until it's safe for all of my artists to come and participate. Um, so that I think we're gonna wait until probably next year. Awesome. Um, so moving on to announcement news. Well, actually before we get to there, the one thing that's not on here um, is the BLM mural. Danny, can you give us an update on that? Yeah, so I've been talking with um, Jericho, um, who works with the Montana Racial Equity Project. And um, so like uh, one of the big questions we have around this mural is funding. And you all sort of answered my questions because I was asked, going to ask, um, if the public art committee might put up um, some funding to match funds, um, but um, just from hearing what you said earlier, that's not possible. Um, so yeah, not not a lot has been going on um, with that. I um, actually had some questions about the permit. I think it's the encroachment. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't remember what it was called. Um, Is this a permit for the bridge or for the art? Um, for the bridge. Um, so the person at uh, Steve Felix, uh, 
mentioned that we would need a, to do a formal request request uh, through encroachment permit from the city of Missoula. And I was actually gonna reach out to you about helping us fill that out because I, again, I'm not really familiar with this whole process. Um, you know what, Danny, we do an encroachment permit every year for the traffic signal boxes project. Um, and it's actually with MDT because it's on their land. And if you want me to help you, I'm happy to help you with that. Yeah, I was gonna ask Kathy, cause I was gonna say, okay. I feel like you've done these before, Kathy. Every year, every yeah. year for the signal boxes. And they, they're pretty uh, much rubber okay, cool. stamped. Maybe we... Oh, I was just gonna say they pretty much rubber stamp them cause they like us. So, <laughs> um, but I'll, I'm happy to help you with whatever you need. Again, I'm, I'm Go trying ahead, to understand some of this um, admin okay. goes on. When is a permit needed? Are you For, so is it only when you're using public, a public piece of a public building or um, bridge or something like that that you need a permit or do you always need a permit? Is um, it, it are the substation folks going to need a permit? That's on public property, so you shouldn't, but it's on public property um, and they just have to ensure that you are being um, careful in your use of materials. And I mean, there's a whole bunch of environmental questions and all of that type of thing that are pretty easy to answer, but on private property, you should be good to go. So just public. And I would just verify that that substation is private property before we move forward in case we, so that way we don't miss getting that permit. Um, really quick on the, um, the Planned Parenthood mural. Um, I just received uh, an email yesterday from uh, Cynthia Kors of NBC Montana. Um, and all she said was she was very interested in the project. She saw it on our agenda. Um, but I don't know in what capacities she's interested. Um, so Danny, I don't know if, um, can I put you in contact with her? Um, I mean, you can just let her know it's, it's postponed for now, but just to see what her, her interest in is in the project. Oh, uh, sure. Okay, Stay great. Me. Okay, Thanks. yeah, sure. And just remember when you are doing any type of interview with the news or the newspaper, um, and you're talking for the public art committee that you talk, you're talking for all of us too. So just be mindful of that. Um, <laughs> I think you'll do fine. Um, so just keep that in mind. Okay. Um, we so, swear too much. yeah, don't, no swearing, no, like, <laughs> I hate art, art's the worst. <laughs> None of that. Okay. All right. Noted. Um, going back to the BLM mural, are you in need of help finding grant funding or private donors? How can, do you need help in any that, area? Like that would be super helpful. Um, just because, yeah, uh, this is probably basically my first project where I'm just, it's kind of like the blind leading the blind. Um, when I'm talking with the rest of the people, I'm like, oh, let me ask someone who knows about these things. Um, so yeah, any help anyone can provide would be appreciated. Um, I was just gonna crowd fund actually, um, but wanted to see um, if the public art committee might have any resources before I started doing that. I don't think we have anything that prohibits us from crowdfunding. Kathy, do you know of anything that would stop us from that? Um, well, is it an official City of Missoula public art project or is it a BLM project? I mean, have we voted on it? I mean, I'm not trying to be a pain. I just like protocol is if we're going to do I don't something like that, we probably should. I don't think we've officially voted on it as far I, as it being. Frankly, I'm like, I, I don't, I'm kind of trying to remember what it is. <laughs> so. so we were approached last month by a student at 
the university who wanted to put so on Orange Street going east or no on French Street going east on Orange Street Bridge there's that Black Lives mural mm -hmm. spray painted on there they wanted to do something permanent um we had also been approached by and I always forget the acronym Danielle can mm -hmm. fill me in um ideas is that close Danielle yeah uh the Montana it's like idea it's like an acronym for inclusivity diversity equity I don't know what the a stands for yeah. um and Lisa well, saying yeah. that the BLM has been taken down um, on Orange Street. So this would be something that wouldn't be taken down, but is going to be representative of the African-American community here in Montana, and specifically Missoula with the Episcopalian Church. Um, I, it just, um, to me, that sounds like there's some ready funding opportunities already there, too. That's cool. Yeah, I think that there's, I mean, with just how what is going on in the country mm -hmm. right now I think there is a lot of um uh opportunity um for um this type of project um I also just wanted to know I think with this mural they wanted to keep it separate from the church um art um and have that be its own thing okay. um but that's just like from one person, but I, f I kind of feel strongly um, about that too. Like, it, because I think just with the art, with the church, that's really like, I feel like that, that needs to be its own project, not just lumped in with this. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I'm not really sure where that project's at right now, um, but I know that there's a momentum with this specific project with the Black Lives Matter mural specifically. So I would say before we vote on it, we'll put a vote to decide if it's an official public art committee piece or if we're just helping um, to next month. And then we can see if there is any funding opportunities outside of crowdsourcing and I can help you with that. If there's okay. any grants or anything like that. We can solidify exactly what this project is if it's going to be just BLM and not incorporate the church at all, and that'll be its own thing for another time. Um, and then we can give a solid proposal for it um, next month. How does that sound, Danielle? That sounds really good. And I will invite all of the stakeholders I feel should be in this conversation. Yeah. So we'll just put that off for a month just to get some solid ground going and I can help you with all of that and kind of okay we can figure it out from there okay thank you um does anyone want to add anything to that conversation or questions about it or anyone want to anyone else want to be involved I have a question is you know there is um now I don't know if I knew that there was an official one last month um but there is a Black Lives Matter Missoula um, group um, that has been doing the various protests around town. And I just want to make sure that they're part of the strategic thinking on this. Um, I know that we were talking last month about the Center for um, Racial Justice and Equality. Um, that, you know, getting that group involved and I don't know if we specifically were talking about Black Lives Matter, Matter Missoula, getting them involved. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I am very involved in their work, and they know. Awesome. Uh, Kathy, did you have something you wanted to add? Oh, well, if I think of any way to get money, I will let you know. Because awesome. I, I know some people have been big supporters here of Black Lives Matter, so. There might be some private money there. Cool. Um, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, then we'll move on to announcements, news, and upcoming events. They are doing another virtual first Friday. Kirsten, is that correct? Did I read that right? Yep. Um, so coming up a week from this Friday, um, yeah, another virtual first Friday through MCAT. Awesome. Um, 
the other thing we're working on cleaning Lillian's piece. So we're making sure that that's all taken care of. Um, I've been, I sent an email to Kathy and she's assisting with that. Um, and I think that's it. Does anyone have anything that they would like to add for <laughs> news or anything to mention? Lise, you go first and then I'll go. Well, I was wondering if anyone has movie capabilities, if um, anyone wants to do a public art committee movie for Virtual First Friday. Um, they have recently taken the movies down to just three minutes. So we could do, you could do, anyway, I don't have these capabilities, but like a short movie of some of our, some of our projects just on still pictures and, you know, something at the beginning be fun. that says the public art committee working for you to make Missoula a more artful place or something like that. You know, maybe we could use some of the photos from the new art evolution public art guide hot off the press. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I have a bad camera guys, but maybe we could do use something like that. And because we have a ton of photos of artists and um, artwork. So that might be kind of fun. Yeah, is anyone computer savvy? Or Kathy, would you like to take that on? Because I will I am I'll, I'll try and work on it. I mean, I do it for work all the time. <laughs> so awesome. That'd be wonderful. I think that'd be a great way for us. But to I don't be. know if I can. I'll try and do it for this one, if it's only okay. ten minutes. But it's only okay. way. <laughs> so you do have to tell Christian that you're that you're officially on the. <laughs> so if you are going to do it, she needs to know because then she um, puts you on the list and things like that. Um, I, I, what I'm worried about is uh, let me look at my schedule for this next week. Um, even though it's only three minutes, I've got yeah crazy life going on. Let me know if it's possible by like by Friday, if you think it's possible. Oh, sure. And Scott sure. needs the video by Monday at five. <laughs> oh, okay. Hmm. Okay. All right. And then Kathy, did you have an announcement or hey, news? Um, or yeah, I was just gonna, I just did want everyone to know um, Art Revolution did come out, our 14th public art guide consecutively. Um, it, we've had good comments on it. Um, advertisers have them around town. They're out at the airport. They're, they're everywhere pretty much. So um, also I carry, and you'll, I sound like a broken record, but I carry a box around in the back of my car and put them places too, just to help the Missoulian um, and to make sure that people see them. So if anybody wants a box, let me know and I will happily deliver one to you. Um, and then the other thing I just wanted to let everybody know, speaking of BLM, we unfortunately had a situation at the corner of Fifth and Orange on the TSB. Someone spray painted silver BLM on the signal box there, um, but we got it off and everything is good. And um, Cameron Kleiss, the artist is, um, we're gonna put some more clear coat on it. So. Um, but it, yeah, you know, that was unfortunate. I have a photo. I was going to try and email it to everybody, but I didn't get a chance because it just happened yesterday, but it's already cleaned off. Awesome. Um, and then did you see Radius Gallery would like some of the books, please? Oh, you didn't get them? So what's the, the Missoulian delivered one here? Did you not get some? Oh, okay. Received one. One? You're kidding me. Okay. Yeah, Arts Missoula didn't get a box like we usually do either. Okay, I'll tell Jackie, you know what? I've got, I have two boxes. <laughs> Gave some to Christian, so Lise, I'll bring some by. Okay, I got the cultural treasures, but not that. Hmm. I have a box sitting right here. I will bring it to you. Awesome. Kathy, I have one question for you um, in regards to Lillian's piece. Can I write back saying that we are looking into taking care of it? Yes. Okay. I will send that email when we are done. All right. Awesome. Does anybody have anything else that they would like to add, say, feel? All right. Awesome. Um, Just an extra special thank you to Kirsten for taking photos of all the signal boxes. Yes. Thank you, Kirsten. Of course. And no thanks problem. for being there to do this Zoom meeting.
Um, all right. Well, that is it. Everybody have a great rest of your day, rest of your week. These projects are exciting. I cannot wait to see how they all unfold. Heidi, welcome. And thanks for- yeah, I was going to say, hi, Heidi. Welcome. <laughs> Uh, thanks for being with us. A call that went long, but um, this was lots of awesome information. Cool oh, hi, Heidi. Have you been well, on this whole time? I was a couple minutes late because I had another okay. call. It's all Did good. you have any? Oh, so everybody, this is Heidi. She is our new city council representative. Yay. Thank you, Heidi. Um, were there any questions that you had hearing all of that go on? No, no. It just sounds really exciting. Really right, cool. Awesome. And if you want to be part of any subcommittee or any project just let us know because okay. you are welcome to help out with anything we always love help sounds awesome yeah maybe just give me can you email me a list of like all the projects you have going on and what the subcommittees are because i don't think i'm i'm so new yeah and we'll i can do that for you <laughs> you know what it would be really cool if you helped us with stoney's now chairperson yeah. committee and the um entryway corridor artwork signage. That'd be cool. That'd be excellent way to get your feet wet. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, brown, that's and, a very and brand new committee too. So it's not established. We're okay. literally at the very beginning of it. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks all. all right. Thanks everyone. Right. Awesome. Okay. Well, until next time, everyone have a great rest of your day. Um, we will chat soon. Thanks, Courtney. You're welcome. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thanks.